everyone, Diane here, and welcome back to Learning As You Go on the Baby Lock Lyric. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to install our bobbin now. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hit a button over here that gives us this exact emblem. And this basically lets me know that I can't start sewing. I can't, I can't press on the presser foot. I can't do anything. The machine is kind of in neutral, so it's not going to do anything while I install my bobbin. So the first thing I want to do is there's a little lever right here. I want to pop the plastic plate, the plastic plate up and our bobbin, it drops in. This is a drop in bobbin machine. And what we do is we make sure that the thread is coming down on the left hand side towards us in the shape of a P. And we drop that little guy right in there. Get my big old fingers out of the way. And there is a small gray lever. You can kind of follow the, there's a little note right here that shows you how to do it. That comes up. It goes all the way around this. It comes down to a little cutter right there. We cut that off. We put our plate back on and we're ready to go. We now turn the neutral button off. One of the things that I found that I absolutely love about this machine um, is that start stop button. We've got the automatic cutter. We've got the needle down. Um, we've got the, uh, oh, I forget what it's called. It's a little round button. And what you do is when you press that, it will automatically stitch in place at the end of where you're at so that, you know, it's kind of like that tying off, um, which is really, really great. But one of the things that I was messing with this morning, which I had a lot of fun with, um, is you can actually do embroider, you can embroider names, words, the whole nine yards. And one of the things that I really, really like is I'm working on some quilts and I'd love to be able to put my name on them. They highly recommend that you put a name and a date. Um, and what's cool about that is I can do that on the machine. And it's actually a pretty simple process. So right now we're in basic a, a basic stitch mode. Um, and I'm going to go, and in this case, if I hit the alphabet once, it's going to give me the standard AB. But I want script. So I'm going to go into the script and I'm going to grab my cheat sheet. And on the cheat sheet, it gives you a numeric value for every letter, uppercase and lowercase, number, and all sorts of symbols. So we can do all sorts of great stuff with this. So I'm going to start with 04. And you have to press the OK after you input each number. 35 is for I. Uh, 27 is for the lowercase a. Oops, no, I don't want to do that. I want to go back. I want to go 27. There you go. Um, N is uh, 40. And E, lowercase e, is 31. There we go. So there we have it. We have my, my name, my first name, in script, and I've, it's right, currently set at 3.6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I want it, I want to see what it does if I go way down to 1.0. And we're going to lower our presser foot. Our light just went from red to green, start, stop. I have my foot pedal unplugged because it's much, much easier for me to do the script if I just hit my start, stop button. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. And we're going to see what the difference is on the 1.0 and the 3.6. It's pretty amazing how smooth and how fast it does this. And so see it's knitting in, or knitting, it's um, stitching in place. And then we just hit our cut button, automatically cuts it. We lift it up. Oh, it didn't cut the bottom or the bottom got stuck. One or the, one or the other, we'll have to figure that one out. 
And there we have it. To me, there is not a difference between 1.0 and 3.6. So I'm not sure if I'm doing something wrong or incorrectly. I shouldn't say wrong, incorrectly. Who knows? But I'm going to put that back up to its basic, its starting point of 3.6. Now, I really do like how that saved or how that looks. So I'm actually going to hit there. You can save all these things, all sorts of different things that you can program into your machine. So there's a little pocket with a down arrow. So basically what you're doing is you're putting this in your back pocket. And I'm gonna put that on number four and I'm gonna say, okay. So now if I go into my back pocket, let's go back. And let's go back up here. We're gonna just change everything. And yes, I'm gonna say yes, it's okay to cancel everything. I'm gonna go back into my pocket and I have four things saved in my pocket. So I'm gonna go up and see what they are. So on my first one, what I've done is I've programmed number one to be my basic uh, piecing stitch. So it's basically, a, it's a stitch length of two. And it's programmed, you can actually program it or hit the button on your machine. It's number 30. Um, and that's for quilting. So that way I can just go in here, hit the pocket, hit the number one and not have to go in and go, you know, here and find it and 30 and plug it in. So it's easy to do. The second one is again, my name, capital D lowercase, the rest of it, but in the standard, um, the standard block font, which is a, a Gothic font, super easy, super simple. Um, the third one down is a, it's over in our second grouping, I believe, somewhere. I'll find it. There it is. It's number 24 over here. So again, you have to, in order to actually get to your second grouping, you have to hit your little leaf pattern once. And to get to the third, the se uh, excuse me, the second grouping, you have to hit it twice. And then to the, get to the third one, you have to hit it three times. But I can go here to the pocket, click on number three, basically not click on it, go to scroll down, say okay, um, and say it's okay to delete my previous one. Let's try that again. I don't know why it did that. Oh no, I deleted it. <laughs> Oops, I'll go back in. Let's see, I'll go back in and fix it. So I'm gonna go here. Okay, let's go here. So you can easily delete what you already had in there. So I'm not sure exactly how I did that. But I'm going to go here. I'm going to hit my button there. I'm going to hit number 24. And I'm going to say, okay. And that's a, a like a vine with leaves on both sides. And I'm going to put that in my pocket. And I'm going to go up to where I had it before. And I'm going to say here and say, okay, now I'm deleting the previous pattern. I'm putting this one back in. I'm going to say, okay. So now my machine has me set up right here. And let's just see what this does. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to lower my pressure foot and I'm going to hit my start stop button. And we're going to let this one go for a little bit. And I'm going to hit my stop button because I've got a thread pulling in the back. There we go. Let's just see what's going on here. What in the world? All right, we're not cutting properly. So I'm going to reinstall my bobbin there in a second. Don't know why it's doing that. Oh, that's why. Okay, so my bobbin came undone from this, this mark back here. And that's one of the things that we have to be really careful of in how they load. So let's get this in here and I'm going to hold it and let's see. Oops, everything is slippery. Let's move that out of the way. Let's give this a try again. And we're going to hit our start stop button. And I'm not going to hold it. 
my fabric in place. We're gonna just see what it does. And I'm gonna hit stop, and I'm gonna hit needle cut. Now, I can tell that every, yep, there, everything's working great that time. So we don't have a little mess back here. We don't have anything, but I can actually tell by looking at it that it's working properly because that bobbin thread I can see coming right straight across right here. If you can't see it coming across here and you're having a couple of little issues with the cutter or with, uh, you know, your, your, your tension on the bottom and, and funky threads everywhere, check that first because, um, it doesn't take much to not quite.